A small organization that not many people have heard of have launched a contest to fly the winners to space. And usually I would take this with a huge grain of salt and not even bother telling you about it, but there's reasons why I take this particular announcement and this particular opportunity seriously and why this is such a huge opportunity in general for human spaceflight providers. I'm going to explain to you why the spaceflight provider Blue Origin is taking it seriously and the untapped market that is huge that human spaceflight providers are aware of, but I think most people are just not talking about. So I'm Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. We help businesses, government entities and nonprofits to grow in space. And this is a huge growth area that is only beginning to open up as human spaceflight opens up. So I'm talking about an announcement that was made yesterday by the Space Exploration and Research Agency, which goes by the acronym SARA. And you've probably not heard of this group before, but they used to go under a different name, which had crypto in it. I think it was like Crypto Space Agency. So I personally did not take it seriously with that name. So I'm, I'm not surprised that they rebranded. The reason why I'm paying attention to this, not just because they changed their name and their branding, but because they have done this before. Two years ago, June 20th, 2022, they flew the second Brazilian astronaut to space, to suborbital space. So I'll leave that up to you, whether you consider suborbital space to be space or not. It was above 100 kilometers. This was an engineer, Victor, I am so sorry, I'm going to butcher this name, Hespania, Hespania. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry, Victor. He flew on New Shepard NS-21. And so just the very fact that this organization has done this kind of thing before and actually flown somebody to space, like that tells me that this is something to pay attention to, that this is very, very likely serious. Another clue was that Blue Origin's official social media accounts also reposted this announcement. And the reason why I think they chose to broadcast this announcement was because it highlights customers that they want to go after. The contest is open to contestants to fly from India, Nigeria, and the small island developing states. It, it's a customer base that's not exactly catered to, right? It's not a, an American, it's not a European, like it's not the typical customer base that you'd think of when you think of human spaceflight. Um, and by the way, I was unfamiliar with the term small island developing states. That is a UN group and it is 39 states and 18 associate members. So I was actually going to read to you which islands, but there's too many to read to you. It's a quite a collection of islands throughout the world that are involved in this small island developing states grouping. The reason why I think Blue Origin wants to highlight that they are taking customers from these areas, these underrepresented areas, is because that is where a huge potential market is from. There are countries around the world, about three quarters of the countries around the world have never flown a single representative of their own country to space. And that is a huge untapped market. You know, when I as an American speak about an American flying to space, I mean, like no big deal, but think back to like the 1950s and 60s when it was a huge deal because the firsts are meaningful. And even here in the United States, we have some firsts that are happening, the youngest, the oldest. There are people... I mean, actually, technically the youngest that, that also flew in Blue Origin was Dutch, I think. But, you know, there are firsts abound. And so the people who are in these underrepresented countries who traditionally have not been at any way a space power, they now get to fly to space through commercial opportunities. I do want to highlight India because they fall into a different category. They are actually a growing space power and they are developing their own astronaut core, if that's the way to say that. They're, they're developing their own government astronauts that they, that they um, plan to fly not only with NASA to the International Space Station, that announcement was made a few weeks, a couple of months ago, but also developing their own space station and Indian space station and um, you know, flying Indians to Indian the Indian Space Station. So they are in a sort of a different category where um, they are a nation that is growing as a space power. And the untapped market potential is huge. So if you are a country that wants to be seen as a high tech leader, even though you've never been seen that way before, fly a representative of your country to space. Um, often they, they tend to go towards satellites. So you see a lot of satellites from different regions and that's for national assets, you know, weather or military or um, earth observation for some purpose that is related to that country that's important to that country. But that doesn't usually make the news outside of that country. Um, but flying the first 
representative of that country to space like that tends to make the news more broadly and it could be that it is funded by government so i actually made a video just a few weeks ago about virgin galactic and axiom also going after these underrepresented countries these underrepresented markets and it's the countries themselves that are flying their own representatives to space with virgin galactic with axiom in that case i was speaking about turkish astronauts in particular but it doesn't have to be a government-sponsored astronaut i'm thinking for example of space for humanity that flew the first Mexican woman to space or this opportunity right here by Sarah which is a private organization it could also be that a company decides to fly their own representative to space and it just happens to be a representative from one of these historically left out areas commercial human spaceflight companies paying for their own astronauts to go to space I mean that's actually been around for decades since space shuttle era before the ISS with Charlie Walker and so it's definitely not unheard of um, it, it's less common and it became less common because of the lack of access to space for humans. There's, there historically have been very few opportunities to fly anybody to space. And that's why you saw NASA slow down its thinking when it came to what non-professional astronauts they want to fly on the space shuttle program, you know, especially after Challenger, um, where you know they had plans to fly a teacher in space, a journalist in space, et cetera, et cetera. All these underrepresented, uh, you know, areas of culture and professions, um, but they really slowed that down after the Challenger incident. Uh, it was a, a significant blow to the teachers in space idea, but also to these other areas where NASA thought that they'd be able to fly many, many different types of people. In fact, space shuttle was called space shuttle because it expected to fly a lot more often, like a shuttle you know, takes people back and forth a lot more often than we saw historically Space Shuttle did. And so just historically, there has not been that access to space that we are seeing now. And it's still very low right now. There's still not that many orbital flights that are not government. We have a few going with SpaceX standalone. We have a few going with SpaceX and Axiom. We have a few that are suborbital with Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. Virgin Galactic is currently on a pause. Blue Origin is coming back from a long pause, but they still haven't really ramped up yet. So there's just still not that many opportunities opportunities for human space flight to go to suborbital or orbital space. But that's going to open up. That is going to open up pretty quickly. There are various vehicles that are coming on in develop that are in development that could really ramp up the opportunities and open up the access to space for the rest of humanity. And you know, I personally want to open it up to all types of people. So not just in talking about country and nationality, but also talking about disability and body type. And of course, all the different types of ways that we have excluded people throughout history. Um, I want to open that up and you can't do that if you're very very limited in how many people you can fit in the traditional way that we've done things but the reason why these companies are caring now is because these companies are wanting customers and these customers can come from anywhere it does not have to be a traditional government and institute from Europe Canada Japan Korea like it doesn't have to be the traditional players space is opening up globally and it's that untapped market of countries think of countries when I name them, you think they don't have anything to do with space. That's the market. That's the market because that's why they want to be involved now. Because traditionally they have not been a player and now they want to be. Or maybe they were on a small scale a player. You know, maybe they did launch their own satellites or did do something with a partnership with somebody else. And now they want to stand on their own two feet and do something that others pay more attention to. Diversification is also super important. So when you think about the budget here in the United States, where we are having budget cuts throughout NASA and budget constraints and the election coming up so nobody wants to rock the boat in terms of the budget and then you've got Europe with its budget constraints and its difficult decisions with how it allocates budget you know the budgets from different European countries coming to your ESA and how ESA allocates that money and you've got I'm sure similar budget constraints and, and unpredictability in other space-faring nations if you go with these nonprofits or these private companies or even of course the wealthy individuals you don't have to worry so much about that unpredictability of government funding. So seriously, I, I, I'm not going to stop talking about it because I think it's such a huge market that we're just going to see grow and grow and grow as the opportunities to fly to space grow.